Lift off. Get started. Yay, lift off. Hey, welcome everybody once again to Astronomy Daily Live. Let's hope everybody's doing well out there in the universe and the world. Yeah, things are good here. Just a um, uh, little bit of music today. I've got a, actually, I have a uh, musical gig coming up in a couple of weeks. So, so uh, I'm sort of preparing for, for that. Got it pretty much done. Um, so yeah, that looks good. Um, oh, you know, I should probably tell you about another thing I'm doing too, but I will I'll hold off on that uh, until uh, I look at the chat. All right, chat is good. So here we are. Doing astronomy once again, thinking, talking, all things astronomy and space and science and other um, nerdy things. You know, tangents are allowed. Um, so, so uh, you know, I, I, I'm just going to pull everybody back in eventually. So, um, so yeah, um, going off on um, tangents is great and fun. I've got you know, the sunset here. It was actually. Um, um, this morning, uh, early, it was actually sort of raining in the area, which is which is just unheard of, unheard of. Um, but that cleared out uh, sort of late this afternoon, and now the skies are clear. The wind is blowing from the opposite direction. So we usually have... Uh, Wind that comes from sort of the the, the west southwest or the southwest. Um, today it's coming from the east, so uh, you know Mary um, Poppins may be um, um, coming by or something. You know that's all I can think is that you know she's sort of on her her way. So all right, well cool. Well as I said, hope everybody's doing well. Carolina Sky, Chuck, excellent. Carolina sky has thunderstorms. <laughs> it just, it just never ends. Uh, Jim, it's, it's, uh, I, I, uh, I, I so wish that I could send you just a, even a little bit of this, even with the wind. I wish I could, but, uh, you know, I haven't found, I haven't been able to find my magic wand anywhere. Um, but I'll tell you, as soon as I find it, I've, I've got some things to do. So, uh, so yeah, Cotty Night Blues, yeah. Um, actually, Carolina Sky just put up a new, um, video. Uh, I think this was of the moon, um, if I remember right. And some really, really great, uh, blues guitar. Really, really, really nice. Really, really nice. So, uh. Make sure to check him out. Anyway, without further ado, hey, Bobby, how are you? All panel. right, that's a much. Hey, um, speaking of music, did you listen to the ladies of Hearts of Space? You know what? I missed yesterday's. Um, I, you know, for some reason, I. it's not that I necessarily forgot. It's just that it didn't, you know, you know, you're not so I I am not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but I I kind of rely on those show titles and sort of the lists of of the um, um, musicians, and I I really rely on those show titles probably too much because when I see one that I'm sort of like well yeah. And that actually was yesterday's Hearts of Space. I looked at it, I forget what it was called, um, um, but I looked at the title and I'm sort of like, well, so, uh, you know, it's it's not that I even forgot. It's just, I, uh, I, I just decided not to listen. Now, the one uh, last weekend, not this previous one, but the last one, right? Uh, that one was actually pretty, pretty good. It was a pretty good one. Yeah, that so, Sibiant uh, style music. I, I, I guess that's what it is. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. 
I don't know. I'll, I'll check it out. See how good it is. Because every show they do is pretty darn good. Yeah, you know, like I say, they, you know, I've, I've uh, uh, noticed that that um, in terms of quality, they sort of, you know, um, um, they sort of by now have 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 run the full gamut. So there have been, at least in my opinion, some pretty terrible ones, um, and some and some absolutely incredible ones. Um, uh, the one from last weekend, um, it, it was, it was on the good side of average, I would say. Um, so yeah, definitely give it a listen if you can. Uh, it's not available for free anymore, but, um, yeah, yeah. that's how that goes. Hearts, right. of, Hearts yeah, of Space and, is... And I just renewed my subscription to the Hearts of Space, so I'm good with that. Oh, good, good. So, with so there, there are there are different uh, subscription levels, right? There's, there's yeah. Like a... I, I got the one where I can just get the weekly, and that's about it. Cool, nice, nice. And the weekly is pretty much all I need and stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I need to do any the extra mile and stuff. Yeah, you know the the weekly is is okay. I like to have you know access to a little bit of it, um, so so uh, I think there's like two or three levels um, to this. So so uh, um, so yeah. It, well, uh, and a fourth level, which is uh, not you know just signing up and getting the free show on Sundays. So yeah. uh, from midnight. To midnight on every Sunday, uh, yeah. um, um, music from the hearts of space is uh, free. So go to hos.com and you've got it. Okay, so Jim wants to know. We also want to welcome Tom in the chat. Um, so Chuck, uh, so Jim wants to know. You ever play the blues sometimes? I have. I I uh, I do play. The blues. Um, I I really really like um, the blues scales. Um, they're really really fun. I forget exactly now because it's been a while since I've thought about it. But um, a blues a blues scale is is just a a uh, um, a moved around. I think minor scale or something like that yeah yeah um but in any case yes yes i uh um i do enjoy uh playing the blues and and uh you know a lot of rock and roll um is sort of blues blues based so um quite a few songs that that uh i've played in bands and whatnot uh, are yeah. definitely just just you know your standard one four or five blues so yeah absolutely now we should absolutely. do a music corporation sometime i think that would be a great idea what do you guys think yeah uh i i i am uh i'm completely open to that and and uh yeah i think uh that that could be extremely interesting so yeah if anybody uh has... used to be pretty darn good with a uh guitar cool cool not that skeptical about guitar or those uh keyboards music keyboards but i can You're, like sing yeah well that's that's as important um uh, you know um uh, uh as important an instrument as any of them right um is the vocals in fact, you know, one might say that the vocals is the most important thing um, when it comes to, you know, like a like a rock and roll band or 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 something like that. Um, so, all right, well, cool. So, what um, kind of genres are we going to be looking at? What kind of what are we going to be looking at? 
like uh, like any pop, country, alternative, or you could try some of some of the Cajun music. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll uh, like I said, you know, uh, if anybody uh, wants to do any kind of collab, you can just send me an email, cosmogladys at gmail dot com, and and uh, let's let's uh, work something out. Everything needs more. Oh yeah, out. everything. Yeah, that's true. Everything. Our drummer had had a cowbell on on his drums, and uh, he used it. You know, I mean, it came in use uh, a, a lot more than um, what you might think. Um, hey there, Ray. More, hey Ray, I think I'm more into like like um, I think like if it's gonna be easy for me. Something like oldies to the nineties or to the two Ks would be good enough for me. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well I like I like sort of all kinds of music. I'm not really too keen on new country um or modern um country. I'm not necessarily too keen on hip hop. Um not too keen uh, on 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 um, bluegrass either. I can handle bluegrass for about ten minutes, and then I start pulling my hair out. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, good musicianship, but but uh, drives me absolutely insane, insane. Yeah. All right. Well, cheers. I've got the uh, yeah. hydrogen hydroxide here. Yeah, something like from the fifties. To close enough to two case would be good enough for me. I like old country. Old country is is. Oh yeah, like know, the outlaw style or the ninety style. Oh, I'm talking about like Patsy Cline. Oh yeah, yeah, like Patsy Cline, Willie Nelson, yes. Johnny Cash. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's the first generation. Yeah, yeah, and it was a good generation. I, uh, you know, the modern country, to me, is, I don't know, just not very interesting. Uh, it yeah. seems to be, yeah, seems, to be right. seems to be a little bit stuck. So, but that's okay. We're, you know, uh, things evolve, and that's just how I like it to be. All right, well, cool. I thought... Um, one of the things that I was going to touch on the other day, and um, we didn't get around to it, was was uh, actually look at a couple of these uh, alternative um, scientific journal um, journals, and and uh, and see see what's um, going on there. And um, Carolina Sky Astronomy. I totally agree. Um, I haven't really heard a lot of his newer stuff, but his old stuff when he was still a relatively unknown, pretty good, pretty good. Um, so I think you know as soon as he got uh, famous, uh, quality, at least in my opinion, just just took a nosedive, absolute nosedive. But but. Um, Couple of his early albums, yeah, yeah, a little, a little confusing. Of some of the lyrics, I uh, actually tease my wife about it a lot. Um, uh, there's a song, um, something like uh, um, "Wanna Love Somebody Like You," and and I, I don't know, I I I kind of uh, when you analyze that that phrase uh, to me that's kind of like a slap in the face that's you know that's a little uh rude uh you know that you want to love somebody like like um uh, this person but not not actually that person i don't know i get completely confused about those kinds of things that's why i tend to stay away from lyrics i guess and just focus on sound so Anyway, so yeah, that's 
that's that. Um, yeah, so so um, I I restarted um, doing a a pretty much a monthly um, podcast for 365 days of astronomy, and actually last month was um, the first one. Uh, I think it I, I think it played on the twenty the twenty fifth. 26th or so, um, and it was, uh, you know, I, I just sort of, I, I thought about it on a whim, and it's like, oh, you know what, I want to do this again, so I just sort of did it the same format um, that I did before, which was like five years ago. I can't believe that it's been five years um, since I did that series of podcast for for I don't think I made it quite a year um, but uh, you know I was struggling with it every single month it was just it was it was uh, um, well it sort of became a burden that I just didn't want to have to carry around so I dropped it but you know I've um, picked it back up and like I said you know this first episode this first um, podcast, um, uh, follows the old format exactly, but for this next one, oh, and um, the name of the podcast is um, the Apogee Podcast because I do it at at or near um, uh, when the moon is furthest from the Earth, the Apogee, and so it's called you know, the Apogee Podcast. So you know, that sort of forces me. Um, you have to do it every month, and it also puts in sort of an astronomical twist. So it's not, you know, always the same day every month, um, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, so, so uh, but I decided that I wanted to do something different. And so what I've decided to actually do is uh, something that, that I've suggested here uh, many, many, many times. Um, link, uh, yeah, I can probably find it. Um, I can probably find it. Let me, uh, uh, let's see. I think if you go to days of, of, of astronomy.org, I think that's Yeah. So if you go to 365daysofastronomy.org, uh, that will propel you to uh, the main site. And from there, you can um, listen to all the podcasts, including mine. Anyway, but I'm, I'm going to, I've, I've decided that, again. <laughs> oh, here comes Bobby. Yeah. Bobby's back. Hey, you're yeah. back. <laughs> Yay. So what we're what we're at now? Well, I was just talking about the fact that I am now doing a podcast for um, 365 days of astronomy. And I had done this a few years ago and I had a format that was kind of I don't know, it was a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought of a new format. And like I was just saying um, before you rejoined us, uh, that um, that format is actually something I've talked about here a little bit. And that is find a paper, find a research paper, and find a reference in that paper. And then go to that paper, right? And then in paper number two, find a reference in that, some kind of interesting reference in that, um, and go to paper three. And then, you know, just um, what I've always said is that, you know, this is sort of like a, a small history lesson um, that takes you back in time. Um, and it's sort of like a connections thing. Um, do you remember the show Connections with um, James Burke? Great, great, great show. Um, came along in the late 70s, early 80s, 
Um, if if you haven't seen the original Connections, watch that one first. There's a Connections two. There's a Connections three. Um, I think there might be other things too, but watch the original. I think they're like 12 or 13 episodes, um, maybe even more. I'm not exactly sure. But um, what he does is he walks you through history, um, through the history of invention um, until, you know, he comes to a modern day invention that, you know, um, everybody has or, or you know, or um, lots of people know about or um, whatever else. And I want to do the same kind of thing with with these astronomical topics is um, um, create a story, right? So, you know, instead of just talking about a paper, I actually want to create a story that that walks us through time, um, you know, that goes back as as early as um, um, we possibly can, and then moves moves through time. And sometimes, you know, it takes a a right turn, right? Um, and and uh, but you know, um, present that story. Uh, so that's sort of what I'm working on now. I think the next Apogee podcast is coming out June twenty second. So. Um, so I've got to uh, actually have to have um, my um, um, podcast into them two or three days beforehand. So I've got about another week or so, you know, to work on this, but I think I've got it. So yeah, I'm going to try that um, format. Uh, this first one is guaranteed is guaranteed to be super rough super just not not right in any way whatsoever um but i have to um create a foundation i have to start um and then after i do this i i will make it better i promise <laughs> so uh okay so yeah, that's sort of what i'm up to um yeah uh, Remember those shows in the seventies? That would be perfect. Wife in the year two thousand. Oh, Predict yeah. wife in a, a yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, right, right now I'm just in the world span right now because I had to get rushed to get to to, to sort out some of the clothes, and so yeah. Uh, uh yeah. I hate to rush. Hate it. Absolutely hate yeah. it. Yeah, and he could have wait. He can wait. He can probably wait. Yeah, but he doesn't want to. He it's got it's got it's always found the show. You're going to do it now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know that's just how things are sometimes. So, all right, well, cool. All right, well. Anyway, so look for that. Um, like I said, it'll be playing again on June. I think it's June twenty second, and so yeah, just go to three hundred and sixty five days of astronomy dot org, and that will take you right to it. Um, you can actually listen to my to my old podcast too, um, from way 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 back when. Um, I think if you uh, yeah, I, well here let's just do it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's find out if that's so, actually. Yeah, I, I, it's like, I, I just, ha I just hate it when when we get on one subject and then you get intercepted, <laughs> and then you change to another, and I, and I get, and I lost my track. I just lost my, my track. Yeah, I hate that too. I hate it. Right, so here, those people are just making excuses. There, I said just, it. Just excuses. So here's. Mm -hmm where we land if we go to 365 days of astronomy dot, dot org. And we'll just go back in time here to wherever mine was, because I'll show you what we can do. We can see, I think it was May 25th, May 26th. I don't really remember. Uh, 
here it is. So May 25th. Um, so I can go to, I think I can go, let's see if I go here. See, this is a link. So let's see if I can go here and it should come up with, ah, yes. So there they all are. So um, I know that you can't see the dates all that well, but this is the latest one from last May 25th. The one prior to that is March 5th, 2015. So there's that one. Um, um, February 5th, 2015. So yeah, this is like four years ago. Anyway, so um, you can listen to them all if you want. There, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to judge my own stuff. I have no idea if it's any good or not. Um, but anyway, so yeah, yeah, you can uh, take a look at that. They're always looking for um, people to come and do a podcast. So they they uh, they uh, they have a podcast every single day. But a lot of it, you know, they're having to scramble to try to uh, um, find things. So, you know, if you're interested, um, get a hold of them and, and um, you can have your own um, astronomical podcast um, every month, every week, um, once a year, whatever. Yeah. And it's kind of fun, and and uh, you know they they are uh, pretty much open to anything. They're just trying to fill space, so so uh, you know they're not. You know they want a little bit of quality, but uh, uh, you know it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, my stuff certainly certainly is not at all. So uh, so yeah, you know if you're interested in that, take a look might be something that you would like to do. All right, so, you know, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, um, um, we were going to take a look at, at some alternative um, astronomical research paper sites. And, and um, we didn't get a chance to do that, so I would like to do it now. So... Yeah. Um, so the one that we um, usually go to, and I try to go to every single day, is is archive.org. That's a r x i v dot org. The x is like the letter chi, um, you know, the Greek letter chi. So it's an archive. Um, anyway, so that's a great site for sort of uh, I don't know. I guess what you would call sort of conventional science um this is just just uh we're all sort of the the normal uh scientific work is being published but there's a couple of other sites that i like to go to to um look at those those things that are sort of more out out in the fringes a little bit um every every uh concept that we have you know, that we hold near and dear to us right now, right here and now, were once fringe ideas, these crazy, don't understand them ideas, right? So uh, I like to go once in a while out, out to those fringes and and see see what things look like out there. Um, see See what's being worked on see what's being talked about, um, see if it makes any sense at all. Um, so one of those sites uh, is called um, vikra.com. That's V-I-X-R-A. And as you can tell, um, V-I-X-R-A is, is, uh, is A-R-X-I-V backwards. So they... They just took archive and flipped the letters around. So now they have Vikra, V-I-X-R-A dot org. Mm. So let's go over there first and uh, 
see what they have to say for themselves. Um, now, Vikra is, okay, so I'm, I'm here, so I'm going to sh share my screen. Dun, 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 dun. Share the screen. Hide that. Come over here. So Vikra is a lot like archive in that you know, they sort of have these, these broad subjects, physics, mathematics, computational science, biology, chemistry, humanities, academics. So, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't really understand why astrophysics isn't first, but okay, you know, if they have to be fourth in line, all right. But I don't think that's very fair. <laughs> anyway, so let's let's look at this. Um, so these are sort of recently. I'm not exactly sure, you know, how these papers necessarily get published. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the mechanism there is. But anyway, these are some new papers that have just come out, as you can see. This one um, came out on the 9th of June. This one came out on the 10th of June. So yeah, let's just, you know, there, there definitely aren't as many, um, but let's sort of see what, what, they're, uh, what they're doing here. If there's anything incredibly interesting. Um, so 100th anniversary of general relativity, cool. Stellar metamorphosis, simulation of black hole mystery. So, you know, one of the things that I noticed right away about uh, most of these papers is that there's only single authors. In the, uh, in sort of the conventional papers, the Astrophysical Journal and the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, there are, there are 10, 12, you know, 30 authors. But as you can see, most of these are single authors and you'll see a lot of repeats. Like I've seen this um, person everywhere um, and he is prolific. George Rajna, he's, he, he's just absolutely prolific. 28 pages, pretty amazing. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. Um, stellar metamorphosis, a pongola-like glaciation on Uranus. I have no idea what that is. I was thinking about this um, live stream, and one of the things that I realize about it is is that you know this is not necessarily the place to come for for answers but is it's definitely the place to come for for questions so uh, if you want to have a lot of questions thrown at you um, come to astronomy daily live every single day and tons of questions will be thrown out uh, let's see Mars orbital distance has changed through history, okay? This is going back into May. Transformation curves of the Walensky-Taylor diagram. Don't know what that is. Uh, let's see. Hydrous rocks and hydrocarbons. Human mind realization process uses the light velocity. Hmm. I'm quite sure about, about that. Kind of looks, uh, let's see what it uh, looks like in printed format here. Okay, all right. Well, they're coming from an interesting uh, perspective, for sure. kind of interesting to see, you know, how the formats change, too. Um, 
And what an amazing um, title to put on each each page. That's that's pretty amazing. Huh. Kind of interesting. I uh, I would have to sit back and really take a look at this to uh, to have any 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 possible chance of understanding it. Um, but yeah, this just sort of goes on and on a little bit here. Huh. Kind of all over the place. The moon and sun angular diameters. Moon angle, or moon, moon diameters angle between these two light beams, gamma equals one half of a degree. Now let's think the gamma equals 0.532 degree. Huh. Three, four, five, Huh. <laughs> yeah, I am not following that. But, you know, regardless, it's it's really amazing how, you know, people think about things. You know, here's here's a perspective that I I have absolutely no I have no reference at all. I have no idea what what they are talking about whatsoever, but there it is for us to read if we want to. The mass versus nothingness, theory five. Wow, that's a pretty deep subject. Um. Okay, so here somebody's talking about the Fermi paradox, which we've talked about here a little bit, bit too. And yeah, this great filter, which is the thing that, that is uh, supposedly going to keep us from um, venturing out um, into the universe. Something's going to happen to prevent us from doing that. Electric fields on the moon. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, there definitely are. Don't know much about them. Uh, let's see what else here. So this is going back to uh, like the middle of May. That's not too far back. Imaging a black hole. Here's George again. 33 pages. It's crazy. He he just puts out these huge, these huge long papers. And I'll bet you it's also a case where it's just almost completely unreadable. Um, okay, so yeah, he is talking about the image of of the black hole here, um, but oh yeah, so he's just he's just going on and on and on here. So I'm not going to try too hard, but definitely, you know, I mean, I'm I'm showing you all this, you know, just to sort of give you a a taste of um, what this is all about. I'm. I'm, I'm encouraging you, you know, to go back and take a look at this. Um, um, try to understand, you know, what they're talking about a little bit. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just sort of glancing at everything thing here. Um, so, well, cool. Okay, yeah, it just goes on and on a little bit. Let's see what else we got here. Venus's age with, that's probably deuterium to hydrogen ratios factored as opposed to Earth and other bodies. Hmm. Stellar, 
stellar metamorphosis again. So I'm not quite sure why this got into the astronomical part, but it says exploring extra dimensions by the help of DNAs, D DNAs of the egg cell and the earth. Wow. Oh, wow. So the abstract says um, that they're introducing two, two natural, t <laughs> uh, you know, okay, um, two natural telescopes for detecting events of extra dimensions. Huh. They'll show the missing genes, which are needed for keeping the animals alive, could, could be existed in extra dimensions. These genes could act like the receiver or center of radio waves and transmit information for extra dimensions into our universe. Huh. These genes could lead to some changes in radiated waves of egg cells and missing some electrons. There, you know, I don't know if this person is writing in, writing in English and not doing a good job, or if this is some kind of a translation, because it's a, I mean, either way, it's pretty bad English. It's kind of hard, it's kind of hard to follow this exactly. Um, because, you know, I mean, who knows if, if they're talking about, you know, actual, like, egg cells, or if they're talking about something, uh, you know, that Discord is, sort of gets lost in the translation, you know? Um, anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of an interesting, uh, I, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Except it's something I've never thought of. Um, wow, so they're going all, all over the place. We're talking about auroras here. Um, wow. Egg cell is a biological object to explore extra dimensions. They really, really like that phrase, extra dimensions, you know. So teleporting sperms from a fertilized egg into non-fertilized egg via um, extra dimensions in a magnetic fields. Huh. I don't know. Looks like some kind of a generator, it says over here, and an oscilloscope over here. But, wow, that's... <laughs> That's almost as bad as one of my drawings. What is all this stuff? I don't know. Huh. So, current versus number here. Pretty interesting. As I said, you know these fringe things they they uh they're they're not going to make a lot of sense and they're gonna look look and sound just just totally crazy but that's why i like to look at them just because this is where all the new things live so they're talking about communicating in extra dimensions yeah They've got references. Very amazing. Uh, Supersymmetric dark matter, supermassive black holes hunt, dark matter direct detection. Here's George again. This guy is just prolific. Space telescope photo of a black hole. Um, so this guy, uh, Jeffrey, 
Joseph Walensky. He's been doing this um, 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 stellar metamorphosis collection here. I've seen a couple of those. Yeah, see, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. But okay, so this one's, I guess, all about aluminum. Here's one about carbon. So I'm not quite sure what he is doing with those. They're really, really short. Quite sure what he's doing with all of that. All stars contain carbon, and it is the main building block for all life in the universe. In the general theory, carbon of a star combines with hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, as well as many others, in various combinations during its evolution. Um, forming all biological molecules. This, of course, takes billions of years alongside the evolution of life itself, which happens later on. <laughs> um, and the carbon molecules increase in complexity as the star's interiors evolve. For this paper, some new ideas that have never been considered before are presented using the general theory. Hmm. got some references to some Vikra papers. Not quite sure if these are his own. They probably are. But, wow, and that's it. Yeah, it's just a couple of um, pages. Um, so, well, cool. Well, if you're looking for new ideas, uh, Vikra is definitely the place to go. Definitely. Kind of interesting. Um, calculating black hole properties. Map the dark universe. There's George again. It's just, he is just amazing. I don't know where he gets all that time to write these things. Uh... Oh, so here it is. He's doing a mass age relation. Cool. Uh, more Jeffrey Joseph. The explanation of the moving bright areas in the first Messier 87 black hole images. Cool. So this is getting back to the first part of of May, so that was over a month ago. So, yeah, let's uh, hold off on on that. That was a pretty good good ride. So, yeah, you know, lots of lots of kind of interesting ideas a little out there for sure, but that's okay. So, you know, and this. Um, this format is a lot like archive in that you know there's just all kinds of all kinds of other uh, way out stuff here, um, and dear, um, dare we uh, dare we look into one of these, see what they're talking about? How about um, how about topology? Okay, so nothing's really been published recently. This is the most recent one, May 4th. The universal profinitization, profinit, I'm not quite sure what that is, of a topological space. I don't know what profinitization is. I wonder if PageMaster knows what profinitization is. <laughs> um, yeah, well, you know, this is going to completely fly over my my head totally, right? This is like reading a different language now. Um, profinite, profinite space. So I don't know what um, profiniting is. But anyway, they've got some diagrams here. I, I, yeah, there's no way. 
Oh. Okay, so they're going to go through some kind of a proof here that, yeah, I mean, they're going to prove that some, some kind of pair of things here uh, actually exist. So, yeah, it, it just goes on and on. But, yeah, so this... This is like fringe mathematics, right? We were just looking at um, fringe astronomy. Well, this is fringe math. So that's that's what fringe math looks like. Pretty crazy. Pretty wild. I like it. It's got one reference. Well, that's okay, I suppose. Tom is saying something to do with topological space. But he yeah. has no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just uh, you know this is this is uh, under under the topology uh, subject heading. So, but maybe he's talking about this. Let's uh, prof profinitization. Let's see if we can uh, find out what that is. Uh, so it just uh, it looks like it's actually pointing to that uh, reference. Can I do this? I can do this, right? Uh, it's still not not going to do it. So I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, profinite. Is that profinite? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so there's some fringe math. <laughs> so the other site that I like to visit from time to time is a site called Progress in Physics. Progress in Physics. And this is pretty nice and fringy, too. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit. Let's see what these titles are. All, all these are free. Um, and they go back, uh, yeah, to 2005. So they've been around for a long time. And here is the latest, 2019 issue two. So. I think they publish these four times a year. So this is the second quarter. Is that, is that how that works? I, yeah, I think so. Um, so let's see, the Dirac equation and its relationship to the fine structure, constant according to Planck vacuum theory, a derivation of space and time. Wow. That sounds like a stretch. Twin universes, a new approach. Evidence for residual strong interaction at nuclear atomic level, the isotomic. Woo, wow. That flies way over my head. Um, so a mathematical definition of simplify. Wow. The origin of inertial mass in the space-time continuum. So, you know, again, this you know this is uh, this is some pretty heavy, heavy stuff, really fringy. Um, but you know, what amazes me is that you know these these people put in. I mean, they have to put in just hours and hours and hours and hours of thinking about this and working on this and. And all this stuff, it's really amazing. I want to see what a derivation of space and time is. That's, <laughs> that's pretty intriguing. Um, Paul Bernard White. So as you can see again, it, you know, it's just a single author. That's, that's how these uh, 
you know, these fringe things are. It's just these, you know, uh, people in their garages, right? Try, um, trying to think about big, big things, deriving space and time. Um, so before um, postulates are presented, um, from which he derives, he, uh, he's he's doing a we, which which is a common thing, even though it's just a single author. They uh, a lot of people do that. They they put in a we when when uh, there's only one author. So that's a little weird. Well, it's not weird. It's annoying. Um, it happens a lot, actually. Um, so from these postulates, they derive the space and time structure um, and properties. Isotropy and um, homogeneity. Huh. Isotropic and homogeneic, I think that's almost the same thing. I, I don't remember what the difference is there. Um, so, yeah, they're talking about a rapid expansion within the first instant of time, um, a continual and uniform expansionary pressure, which means it's going to be accelerating. Um, due to continual influx of non-zero point energy that is uniformly distributed, i.e. dark energy. Time dimension is shown to have an arrow in quotes. Okay, so let's look at these postulates. Let's see if we can... Uh, make any sense of these whatsoever, okay? So, um, number one, for creation of the physical universe, the basic information element is a type of projection. Um, more specifically, a projection from a prior level. And number two, the basic information structure is a sequence of such projections. Hmm. So here's number three. Each such um, projection is a one dimensional vector um, constituting a different but related one dimensional space. The basic relations between these projections slash vectors are stated in the next um, postulate which is number four, saying that prior things, projections, levels, and constructions from them are um, independent of subsequent things. And conversely, sus subsequent things are dependent on prior things. Huh, okay, well, I don't know, that's kind of interesting, but um, yeah, wow, I would have to think about that for a little while to really grasp what he is talking about. And, you know, I mean, I have to read the whole thing too, but he says that he is going to, um, do these things, right? 3D plus time structure, space and time. Um, Three-dimensional space is isotropic and homogeneous. And uh, isotropic and homogeneous, wow, those are, those are so close to the same uh, meaning. Let's look up isotropic. Having a physical property 
which has the same value when measured in different directions, right? And homogeneous means, okay, actually, um, they had isotropic versus tropic versus homogeneous. What does Okay, this probably not gonna. Yeah, this is uh, too long of a thing. So let's let's go back and just define. So isotropic means that it looks the same everywhere. Um, homogeneous means that it is the same everywhere. So to me, isotropic and homogeneous are sort of redundant. Um, so, but, but yeah, I, you know, I mean, I'm gonna trust that this fellow understands what, what he's talking about. Um, and at the time dimension has an arrow. Um, space undergoes a rapid expansion, um, first instant of time and um, that space is ex, um, accelerating its expansion, right? Because there's a continuous push. So pretty cool. I am I am definitely not going to uh, try try to dive into this uh, too much. I just like you know, like I said, I like to show these things off because uh, I find them interesting and and uh, I think that more of us need to pay attention to this stuff and not don't don't just you know blow it off because it sounds weird or you don't understand it um, there's you no know, who knows right we just don't know some references. So very cool, interesting, interesting. And uh, apparently, you know, I mean, uh, not going into this a lot, but I mean, it, it looks like he, he at least believes that he has done it. So very cool. Interesting. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see if there's anything else here. Um, I'm noticing what what time it is, so don't want to don't want to go too too much over if I can help it. Picometer toroidal structures found in the covalent bond. So a covalent bond is is um, is when um, at least according to you know modern chemistry. Um, that's that's when um, uh, the electron is actually, uh, I believe, transferred or is it shared? Is a covalent bond shared electron or transferred? There's an ionic bond and a covalent bond. Uh, I forget which one is which. Um, towards the field's origin, I don't know what that is. Euler's number. Intersubband. Intersubband transitions. I'm not quite sure what that is either. Cosmological significance of superlim superluminality, which is uh, faster than light travel. Um, incompatibility. Do, 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 do. Uh, not really seeing. Not really seeing anything particularly eye popping. Um, this is going back now to the end of 2018, so I don't want to get too far, too far back, and all that. But yeah, you know, I, 
greatly encourage you all, you know, to take a look at this from time to time. Um, you never know. There, you know, there's some interesting concepts here, and and uh, yeah, I just don't think you know that we should necessarily throw all that out. It's just, um, yeah, I think there's some interesting things here. Um, who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, I. Th think i'm gonna check the chat um yes down the rabbit hole it goes um so yeah very very cool okay i'm going to get out of here i'm gonna stop sharing and i'm going to say that yeah i think it's time to get on out of here for for today um uh, looking at the chat don't see anything else pressing um so yeah i think we're good i think we're good i uh, i definitely According want to wikipedia cobalin bomb is also called mecca bomb it's a chemical bond that involves a sharing electron pairs between atoms these sharing. electrons yeah. Pairs are known as share pairs or bonding pairs. Yeah. And the okay. stable balance of attractive repulsive forces between atoms. Right. When they when they share electrons is known as covalent bonding. I believe I believe the the molecules that make up HOH, I think the atoms in there share electrons. So I think those are covalent bonds. The other kind of a bond that I'm aware of is the ionic bond. Where where the electrons are actually like like moved from one atom um, to another, and then um, it it um, 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 interacts um, with a new atom. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here for now. So thanks everybody for coming in again, um, looking at some some fringe astronomy, which which uh, is always nice. Um, so yeah, I will be back here again tomorrow, two hours UTC. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up. Share this around. Um, this is just a fun, everyday um, gathering, casual, talking, astronomical things and sciencey things and whatever else. So cheers. And all right, I am out of here. Um, take care, everybody. Peace, cheers, and all that. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. And I will see you. I will be back. Um, I will be back here at least in uh, a little less than twenty-three hours. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye.